I know I started this last week and I said that I might not go live every week, but um, sometimes I find it's easier just to do this than to type out a bunch of information. So this week I wanted to cover some myths versus facts when it comes to working out. Um, in the fitness Okay, my internet's a little sketchy. Hopefully this continues. Um, so why don't you go over the top three myths that um, we've heard over the course of the 27 years that Coach Lisa and I have been in the business. They still linger around, funny enough. I don't know why, but you know, when things get teeth and they gain traction, it's a little hard to let them go. So myth number one, no pain, no gain. That is the biggest myth that ever there was. So, you know, you always watch those movies of Warner, Arnold Schwarzenegger and all the other bodybuilders in the 80s and you in through all the 90s and you know everybody's always got this whole theory of like well if it doesn't hurt I'm not working out hard enough and I'm not doing what I need to be doing that's not true okay especially as we get older so you know as coaches and trainers one of the first questions I always ask my clients is how old are you and there's a reason behind that because our bodies change from 20, 30, 40, 50 and beyond. So you always have to take into effect and into account um, how much stress that you've got on your body, what your sleep schedule is like, what are you eating, whether you've had children or not, whether you've had C-sections with those children or not, like uh, what other surgeries that you've currently had. You always have to take into effect of what that is. The second thing is, and I've talked about this many, many times, is what are your goals? Like everything doesn't have to hurt day in, day out for it to actually be working. There is a better, more effective way to build the healthy body that you want without having to be sore and ache for days. So if you are, for an example, super sore because you're, you know, working towards running a marathon, that's a different kind of thing. That's like, you know, are you feeding your body with like the right nutrients to have muscle recovery? Are you eating enough protein in order to rebuild the muscle that you're tearing down, right? Because in order to grow a muscle, it's progressive weight um, and, and you have to tear down all those little muscle fibers in order for them to grow, which means you have to give your body the right nutrients to replenish and that way you're rebuilding that muscle. Okay, so the whole myth of no pain, no gain, isn't true for majority of the people. If you're looking to just work out, stay fit, stay toned, you wanna have those shapely shoulders and, and, and arms for like the sleeveless dresses that we wear. I know, a little vanity goes a long way. Um, so these are different things. You don't have to be aching. If you're sore for longer than 48 hours, you've gone too far it is most certainly too far. So there's also a way to tell if uh, the thing that we use for, for training, uh, especially when I'm training elite athletes, it's the DOMS effect, delayed onset muscle soreness. So what we do is take into effect how long did it take for the pain to kick in? And then once the pain kicks in, how long did it take to, for you to recover fully, right? So when I was training elite athletes, we would always clock that and keep that data so that we would know whether their endurance was getting better, was their power increasing, was their strength increasing, right? So we're not always building muscle just for the sake of building muscle. We're building it for something specific. And you, you know, as you guys know and remember that muscle supports your joints, which leads me into the myth number two, lifting weights makes me bulky. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It gives you a more sculpted body. Now, what happens for a lot of people is they don't change what they're eating and how they're eating when they get serious, more serious about working out. When I say serious, that just means that you're being consistent week after week, month after month, year after year, because muscle doesn't grow just because you've lifted a weight once. Okay, so you are actually better off to build muscle by doing a little bit every single day, different body parts or a body split, however that works out. There's like hundreds of combinations. When we put together personalized training programs, there is hundreds of combinations depending on the goal that you're looking to achieve. So 
when I need a visual. Oh, here it is. Okay. So when you think of pound per pound, it's always the same, everybody. Pound of fat, pound of muscle. So while you're building the muscle, you're going to messages coming in while you're building the muscle your body's going to look a little bit bigger until you change what you're eating and then the body fat starts to burn off right so that's where you can see that definition so when somebody looks bulky it's because they're only doing one piece of the pie no pun intended so when if all you're doing is building muscle but you're not sleeping properly drinking enough water to flush if you're not getting the right uh, amino acids in there, if you're not eating enough protein, if you're not changing the way you eat into better foods, taking out all the junk food, you guys all know what I'm talking about. I don't think at this stage that we have to say what the actual foods are you're eliminating. So you're gonna, for a time period, look a little bit more bulky, but you need to give yourself a time frame of eight months to 12 months to start to really change that over in order to see that lean look. And I know that's never an answer that anybody wants to hear. Everybody likes to think, oh, I went to the gym for two weeks. Why am I not seeing any results? Because you didn't give your body a chance. So this is the thing and I tell my clients all the time. You're six weeks before you see a change. You're eight weeks before your family starts to notice something. And you're 12 weeks before the rest of like your strangers walk up and go, hmm, something's different. They can see it. But you need to keep going. You are no short of, and I've actually given this time frame to somebody else. They had like zero core strength, low back pain, uh, shoulder problems. They had a like immobile shoulder. And her and I, she's actually a friend I know from school. And her and I talked it out and she gave me the lowdown exactly where she was. And I told her to her time frame of getting back into strength was two years. Now, the time's going to pass anyway. That two years is going to happen. So when people hear me say what the actual timeline is of what it really takes to make build muscle, most people are like, oh, that's too long. I don't want to do all that work. Well, we're going to get older anyway. Would you rather get older looking good, feeling strong, so having supportive, like your, your, your muscle support, your body, because your skeletal system, which is all the bones, they need support. And as we get older, ladies, I hate to break it to you, the old, the every, for every year, we start to lose a percentage of muscle. So the muscle actually starts to shrink around the bones. And if you look at like old ladies who, you know, you know the ones who are 70 or 80 and they're frail because they don't want to pick up a weight and they don't want to work out. Those are the ones who have osteoporosis. Those are the ones with arthritic problems. Those are the ones who break a hip. Those are the ones who have to like need a walker, need a cane and, and a wheelchair. So you pick your poison, right? You either... Lifting the weights, feeling good, feeling strong, sleeping well, no stress, cut the anxiety because you're lifting some weights and you're eating properly or you have a wheelchair to look forward to. So lifting weights does not make you bulky. It actually makes you more streamlined, slimmer looking. You can be the exact same weight with muscle and be at least three sizes smaller because it's not about losing weight and it's not about dieting. Now, myth number three, the more sweat equals a better workout. Mm, no, not necessarily. You may have to take into account that if you have a chronic stress, so if your body's in a fluctuation of stress constantly for more than three or four days repetitively, you're in chronic stress, right? So there is a whole protocol to bring that stress level down. If your stress level has gotten to the point of anxiety, there's a whole protocol to bring that anxiety and break it. I know because I've done it and I've done it with all my other clients. So if you have PTSD, which I used to have and I've healed myself from that, plus my other clients or depression, all of it falls into the same category. If your body is under that kind of turmoil, there's different things you should be doing. Swimming for one, walking is so underrated, Pilates, yoga, something that's going to move the body, strengthen the body and not create yet more stress on the body because training and working out creates a stress. 
So if you're looking to also trim the waist, as most women are, you want to target those deep core muscles. That takes a different kind of training. And that doesn't create, that doesn't mean you need to jump around, run around and be all sweaty. So most women are going to be like, I got to get on the treadmill. I've got to run. I've got to bike. I've got to sweat. No, no sweating. Fine. Not a problem, but doing it all the time. And that's all you do. That's a problem. So remember I mentioned the pie. You have to have a, you have to have a balance of all things. That means you have to do some cardio because our heart and our lungs are muscles and they need to be stretched, stretched, strengthened, all of it. Yes, stretch your lungs. You can grow them, especially swimmers. Ask them. The more you can hold your breath and the more breath work you can do, the more capacity your, your lungs are going to have, the better your breath work, the actual lower your heart rate and blood pressure. That's just a side note. So when you're thinking about what do I need to do, are you tired? Are you stressed? Have you slept that night? All of those questions, right? If you're answering in the positive, like yes, stress, no, to, no to the sleep, whatever, I'm tired. Then you should do something else like a restorative yoga. You should do like a little Pilates program. You should do like go out for a walk. You don't have to go for a run because you feel like you've been sitting at the desk and you're like, oh, I have to burn it off. It's not how this works. Guys, so those are the, the, that is such a huge myth and it's been toting around for decades actually. Um, so when you're looking at, our th I'm going to recap the three myths, the no pain, no gain, not true. Lifting weights makes you bulky. Ladies, absolutely not. It will actually slim down your body actually. And the more, more sweat equals a better workout. Absolutely not. I can do an amazing workout. My muscles will feel feel adequately tired. I'll feel rejuvenated, and I haven't even broken a sweat. It's all about what you know how to do. I mean, I get it. I've been a trainer for 27 years, so I know all the tricks and all the all the templates of how to put things together. So, if you guys have any questions for me, um, ladies who are watching live, thank you. I appreciate that. You guys know what to do. Hit the love button or the like button. If you have any questions or comments, please post in the comments below and um, I'll be happy to answer with answer them for you. If you want to know more about a training program or more about how to d eliminate your stress, you guys know you can DM us and set up for a clarity call and we can walk you through what is the best option for you and how to get the more out of your fitness and more out of your training without actually killing your body. Guys, that's me today for the Coach's Corner. And like I said, if you have any questions or comments, post them below and we'll see you next Friday.